Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 376. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about how to get a mindset for investing. And this comes from a listener question actually from Instagram. So she said, I'm listening to all the podcasts, reading all recommended books and then some, but I get stuck with hoarding knowledge slash questions and not actually taking action. Still trying to figure out how to read charts, prospectuses, where do I go for PE ratios, and what are all those other numbers and percentages, etc." Well, good questions. You know, I get the feeling that a lot of people are inspired by my story of how I was an investor in mutual funds in the past for a long, long time. And then I bought How to Make Money in Stocks by William J. O'Neill. And that was really the turning point for me. And I know that a lot of people have actually gone and bought that book and tried to start investing in individual stocks. And they might not have any investing experience yet. So trying to start out with individual stocks is really a hard thing to do and probably not the best way to go if you're just starting out with your investing. So I want to encourage you to start out with either exchange traded funds or mutual funds. Of course, exchange traded funds are fixed portfolios. They're a bunch of stocks, a basket of stocks, if you will, like the S&P 500 that are the 500 largest companies in the US that just stay static, they don't change. So you can go to an ETF company and you can plug it into your asset allocation. You can take their ETFs, their large cap growth or their large cap value or mid cap, small cap, international, emerging markets, etc., and just plug them into an asset allocation model. So that's the easiest way to get started investing is just to plug ETFs into an asset allocation model. I would do that over trying to buy individual stocks because trying to buy individual stocks is a lot more to it than just learning PE ratios and percentages and reading charts and prospectuses. There's a lot more to it. And you know, it's good to really get used to what is it like to be in the market? What is it like to feel some risk? To go with the waves and the ebbs and the flows of the market and feel those corrections and pullbacks and the fear that you're feeling and feel the exuberance when things are going well and you feel like it's just gonna keep on going forever. And notice how usually those are turning points. When you think it's gonna go on forever, it usually turns the other direction. And when you're really scared and you're just about ready to throw in the towel, that's when it turns back up. And so getting used to the investor emotions is a really important part of investing. So I would encourage you to get invested through exchange traded funds or mutual funds. You can also look at different mutual fund families and see what they have to offer. I would look at just getting started investing and get started investing for the long term. And then if you can add some money on a monthly basis, You can dollar cost average in, so that is buying the investments on the same day each month. So your investment company can do that for you. They can take money out of your checking account and put it into your investment account, or you can do it manually if you want. Every 13th of the month or whatever day of the month you choose, you can take money and put that into your investment account. And that helps to take the emotion out of investing as well. So I wouldn't worry so much about trying to become an expert and having that hold you back from investing. The important thing is to really get invested, keep going, try to get more money in the market and keep a long-term perspective. Because if you have 10, 20, 30 years to be investing, that is really allowing your money to compound and putting time on your side. 
So I would I would think about that. The other thing you can do is you can listen to my podcast about mindset and affirmations, and that can clear some of your blocks. If you're really feeling stuck and like you can't move forward, creating some positive statements about what a good investor you are or how easy it is for you to invest or how much you like investing, how it's simple for you. Those kinds of statements said over and over and over with, of course, already true statements in between, which tricks your brain so that it doesn't turn negative in between each statement and start arguing with you. You know what I mean. That is a great way to change your mindset. So I think work on getting rid of those blocks and use the affirmations. Listen to some of my podcasts about changing your mindset and using affirmations to do it. And then do some research on exchange traded funds and asset allocation models. There's basically three different types of asset allocation model. One is for the aggressive investor who's gonna be you know, 90% stocks. Another is going to be for the moderate investor who might be 70 or 75% stocks. And then the conservative investor who should only be people who are closer to retirement. You shouldn't be a conservative investor really, unless you don't have many years until you're going to need the money. So you might be close to retirement or you might be close to needing those funds for a home purchase or whatever you're going to do, then you can be conservative. But mainly we want to think about investing for the long term. And this is where you can leave your money in the market. You can allow it to compound over the long term for you. And that's the best reason to be investing and the best way to be investing is to have a long term perspective. If things are too short term and you have to rely on the market to do something specific in a specific period of time, that can be a problem because the market might have its own ideas about where it is in the cycle. So I would just say invest for the long term and try to get invested as soon as you can. Don't let the mental blocks don't let the frustration or the lack of knowledge really keep you from investing. Just plug in those exchange traded funds into an asset allocation model. You can listen to my podcast on asset allocation models if you want some ideas for some. And that is going to be the easiest way for you to get started. So I hope that helps. I hope that clears those blocks. And over time, if you want to start experimenting with investing in a stock, you can listen to my podcast about what makes stocks go up and get some other knowledge about stocks. And over time, gradually tiptoe for more of a diversified portfolio into perhaps some individual stocks. But definitely, I don't recommend that that's the first thing you start with. I want you to start getting experience as an investor and really get the mindset, the emotions of investing under control, because that is really the toughest part about investing is just keeping your emotions in check and keeping the long-term view. So I hope that helps and that you'll get your investment portfolio going right away without waiting any longer. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.